So we're we're gonna stay in the in the New World Translation right here on their website, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna ask if you can go to Acts chapter four. Yeah, I want to thank the JW.org for allowing us to so quickly and easily access <laughs> right. their materials. Right. Yeah. I don't know. They, they might change. They might see this and go, now you need a password, you know, to be able to get on their <laughs> website. <laughs> you got to be a member. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to show you in this video how using the Jehovah's Witness Bible, the New World Translation, is one of the best things that you can use to witness to them. In particular, in this video, I brought on my friend Veda Hedgeman to talk about how he uses the New World Translation to show that Jesus is God. If you don't know, the Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that Jesus is God. They believe that this is a damnable heresy. In fact, they pride themselves in not believing that Jesus is God. There are many things and doctrines that they believe that are very different Uh, from Orthodox Christianity that they want nothing to do with. This is one of them. However, if a Jehovah's Witness were to read and study their Bible, they would and could indeed see that Jesus is, in fact, God. And that's what we're going to set out today to do. Just a forewarning, (laughs) this video is probably long. It's kind of extensive. We had a a blast uh, going through this information. This is something that I am very passionate about as a, as a Christian as well. I have a lot of love for the Jehovah's Witness people, and I like to effectively reach out to them. I think this is a very effective thing to do, to use their publications to talk to them and reach them and get them to think and question their religion. Veda and I get into uh, how him and I became friends at the beginning of this interview, uh, but he knows his stuff with this. He's also been on Cultish with our friends Jerry and Andrew, uh, talking about this very topic, so I will leave a link in the description for you to check that out as well, because he goes over in both uh, videos different content with both of us. I really enjoyed Veda's energy, his love for God, his love for truth, his love for the scriptures, his personality is very contagious. So I really have a good feeling that you guys are gonna learn a lot from this video. It's, I find this stuff to be very fascinating. I hope you enjoy. I am particularly excited for this interview today because this is my first love in ministry, which is uh, witnessing to Jehovah's Witnesses. This is the beginning of it all about I don't know, 10, 11 years ago, maybe more, uh, it began with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's something that's near and dear to my heart. So I'm really excited for today's guest, uh, Veda Hedgeman. Veda, thank you so much for coming on today and speaking with me. Thank you so much for having me. I am excited to A, have a conversation about, uh, you know, about the false doctrine of Jehovah's Witnesses, but I'm also excited to talk to you. You know, I remember hanging out with you in Texas yeah. with Frank Turek and, mm-hmm. um, and many other apologists. So I'm great to finally actually collaborate with you in some way. Um, and I hope it's first of many. What's mm-hmm. happening? Yeah, this, uh, me and Veda kind of go back. <laughs> uh, we first <laughs> met at CIA. You guys have heard me mention CIA many times on my channel. And if you don't know what it is, it's cross examine instructor Academy and they do it every year. They just did another one like last week. Yes, they just, at at least at the time we recorded this. They'll go and they'll do this every year. And it's just so much fun. It's a lot of work because you present, uh, you go and you get to meet a lot of the other students, but you also get to meet the presenters. And uh, that's where me and Veda met. And it was in 2020. And we've kind of kept in touch a little bit since then. And it was when you went on cultish. And this is actually the topic that you talked about on cultish. And I I thought it was brilliant and Mm -hmm. thought it would be great to get you on my channel and just kind of geek out about this, you know, get (laughs) get your input on this stuff. How did you get into this ministry? What is it about this that um, you found interesting? Well, it's interesting that as you were, you know, uh, wrapping up your thought, you mentioned knowing the real thing so that you can identify or more easily identify, you know, the fake thing. And that's how I got interested in, uh, you know, in, in groups like this, the Jehovah's Witnesses. So in, in really quick summary, you know, I'm a former agnostic that was sort of leaning towards atheism for most of my life. Uh, when the Holy Spirit, you know, grabbed hold on me and I fell in love with God, I just started doing my best to 
to just uh, to just eat up the scriptures. I just love the word of yeah. God. And when it comes to these heretical groups, you know, the Hebrew Israelites of the world, Jehovah's Witnesses of the world, Mormons of the world, all, all of these groups that use similar language of, of, of Orthodox Christianity, of true Christianity, you know, they use similar language, you know, uh, they might say most high, you know, that, you know, they might say, you know, things about God that sounds like what we say in church or that what we, or that sound like what we say in community. And I just remember, you know, just being just so grieved because I would think about how influenced I could have been when I was just curious about God. Yeah. You know, uh, when when the Holy Spirit, you know, grabbed hold of me, you know, mm -hmm. it started with me being curious about God. And, you know, if I was talking to certain Jehovah's Witnesses or Hebrew Israelites, you know, I mean, I know the, you know, I'm part of God's elect clearly because, you know, God is, uh, you know, because God has chosen um, to uh, allow me to be saved, praise the Lord. But you know, just, just the mere fact that I know that I could have been influenced, mm -hmm. you know, because they, it sounds right. You know, if you, if you don't know what is right, it can sound right. If you don't know anything about uh, fixing cars and I just say something about, yeah, you know, your alternator, you know, is, you know, is connected, you, confident. you know, <laughs> 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 you know your, your alternator is connected to the brakes, you know, and you, once you do that, that's why your car is going to move over to the right. So that's why I need $3,000 to fix your windshield. Oh. If you don't know anything about cars, you might go, okay. Right. Yeah. But someone who knows anything is going to be like, none of that makes sense. So yeah. just knowing that I, I just really have a a desire to help information be more available. You know, if there are someone who might be struggling mm -hmm. with false doctrine, like Jehovah's Witnesses, or someone who may know someone and they want to witness to Jehovah's Witnesses, or maybe they're Jehovah's Witness that's getting, you know, that's getting curious, mm -hmm. you know, you know, they're sick of their uh, medical rules changing, you know, they're, they're sick of not being able to talk to certain family members, and they're just curious, you know, I just pray that I can speak the truth with love and help people um, know the truth about what God has revealed about himself through his holy scriptures. Amen. You know, golly, preach it. Yes. <laughs> I loved how you put that with the, the car. I, I love using metaphors and uh, yeah. using examples like that from everyday life. That was a good one because that's really what it's like is that if you don't know, right, like maybe you're curious and you're like, man, I really want to know more about this God. And here come two Jehovah's witnesses. They are confident. Yeah. They will answer every question. It's wrong, but they will answer every right. question very confidently. The Absolutely. alternator is attached to the brakes, man. You know, like <laughs> Jesus is Michael, the archangel. You know, they will they will show you scriptures, all this stuff. And if you're not familiar with the scriptures, this sounds very convincing. Uh, yeah. Very, very good. I'm glad you explained it that way. All right, uh, now uh, there are so many topics about the Jehovah's Witnesses, and in fact, I made a series many years ago about the Jehovah's Witnesses that you guys can check out. I'll leave a description, a uh, link to it in the description. My favorite is mind control because it explains a lot about the locks on their heads, why they're hard to get through to. But today I'm, I brought you on to talk about something that we're both very passionate about, which is how to witness to a Jehovah's Witness using their own material. Yeah. This is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're going to do this with the New World Translation. Tell me a little bit about that. How did you get into using their material to witness to them? Well, it's a, that's a great question. You know, so for one, you know, when I got into uh, theology, I was just curious, you know, if the truth was Je what Jehovah's Witnesses teach, I would be a Jehovah's Witness. I wasn't mm -hmm. like, hey, I want to uh, be a Christian and also uh, living life uh, as a Christian is not easy. It's actually the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, in yeah, my flesh, yeah. because my flesh wants to do all the stuff I was doing for 23, 24 years before I got saved. Yep. So I wasn't like, yeah, I want to be a Christian one day. Absolutely not. But the thing is, it's, it's evidentially true. Mm -hmm. And not only do I know it intellectually, uh, but the Holy Spirit has, uh, has convicted me and corrected so many things that are unholy about me, even still to this day. So the, I say that to say that, um, you know, I would just be curious about 
people who would say that they're coming from the Bible the way that I am. And there have been this completely different interpretation. Uh, I know we're focusing on Jehovah's Witnesses, but even with Mormons and Hebrew Israelites, it's, mm-hmm. you know, uh, my understanding when I would see them, I'm like, you got a Bible like me. And, you know, a Mormon would say, yeah, we can all be gods and all this stuff. We can all get there. So, and it's like, what? Like, how? Like, what are you reading to where you get that? You know, when Hebrew Israelites say, yeah, uh, only uh, Jews can be saved. Gentile doesn't mean actual Gentiles. It's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like the Bible. And I would just be curious and I would just try to read what it is that they're reading. And with Jehovah's Witnesses in particular, you know, uh, the Lord has allowed me to have some familiarity with uh, the triunity of God uh, in the sacred text. So I would just get curious and just look at how, although they have a corrupted Bible when they change the Bible in so many places, you know, what does their Bible actually say in, as it relates to the triunity of God? And the thing is, God is so sovereign and he is uh, so omnipresent that even in a corrupted version, human Mm -hmm. beings cannot change everything. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how big the council is. We cannot outsmart God. So the fact that God has chosen to leave 66 different love letters that reveal him, I don't care how much you change. There's going to be some strong elements of the truth of God that's in there. So, you know, I was just uh, using some of the familiarity that I do have with the scriptures and just seeing what their translation said. And I was like, aha, look at this. Y'all, y- 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 couldn't change this one. Aha, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> I caught the home away with that. Thing, but it still says he's God. <laughs> gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> Whoa, gotta be quicker than that. So, so that's sort of how I got into it. And I'm quite sure there are things that I have not seen in the New World Translation yet. But there, there are a lot that can show that that can show the triunity of God, and even responding to some of their objections when they say, "Well, the Holy Spirit can't be a person because it gets filled." You know, you, I can disprove that uh, by the grace of God using their own translation. You know, so it it was just really curiosity and just being wowed at how sovereign God is, even in a corrupted translation. Yeah, isn't that cool? Whenever you get into that and you you go down like that research rabbit hole and you start realizing things about this religion that just blow your mind. Right. Um, for, so for people watching, maybe you're, they're not familiar with Jehovah's witnesses or why we're even right. Cause why we're even trying to talk to witness to a Jehovah's witness. And the thing is, is that it's really important to emphasize that Jehovah's witnesses are considered a cult and Absolutely. it's really, uh, important to emphasize what that even means. And this is why uh, I made that uh, the series and go over mind control. Jehovah's Witnesses guys are completely different beasts. Uh, they will call themselves Christians. Uh, they will say that they are the one true religion. Uh, the pattern of the religion is very interesting because usually with with a cult or a, a high control religious group, you're going to have a leader above you, and that leader is ba- basically who you have to go through to get to God. And that is the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. They make their own materials. They have made their own Bible. You're not allowed to ask open-ended thought-provoking questions. There are, they say that you can ask questions, but you have to be allowed to ask certain questions. Like even in their watchtower study at the Kingdom Hall, there are questions on the bottom that you're allowed to ask. You're, I mean, you, you can't just have uh, it's very discouraged. You can't just ask like, you know, Hey, well, I, I don't know if that works. What about this? That no, you don't do that. There's a very rigid structure to Jehovah's witness religion and all of many, many of their beliefs would be considered completely unorthodox to like a Bible that you would find, right? Like you would read about God, Jesus calling himself, uh, you know, I am right. John one, one is changed in their Bible, all yeah. these things. Yeah. Even salvation, you, you have to come to Jehovah's organization to be saved. There is no religion that Jehovah gave to us to be saved through. Uh, That's these right. are things that, yeah. Like, so, um, we're, we're not talking about just some innocent, casual religion. We're talking about bad theology that has killed and hurt people. And, dance people all right so um there's a lot more to know about this religion but i want everybody to understand uh what me and veda are doing is helping the average christian understand why a the jehovah's witness needs to be witnessed to 
Uh, B, they are in pain. Uh, these people don't have joy or the sun. They will tell you all day that Jehovah's people are the happiest on earth. That's actually something they will say at their conventions. Very cultish when they do that. Like, no, no, you're happy. Smile because Jehovah's people are, are happy. Be grateful. Right. The organization equals Jehovah. So whatever you do to, uh, to, to the organization you're doing to Jehovah, so you've left Jehovah, you are to be shunned. I could go on about this, but I really want people to understand that there, there is a very huge difference between the freedom and grace and love that we have as children of God compared to a Jehovah's Witness who never knows if they're saved, who does not know that love of God. There's all kinds of things. So just making sure that everybody understands that. And uh, I mentioned the beginning. So the New World Translation, it is a completely different translation than what you would find on your shelf. This is made by Jehovah's Witnesses and for Jehovah's Witnesses, okay? I'm an apologist, you're an apologist. And when you're into apologetics, it's really wise, in my opinion, and in my uh, experience, to really understand the, the, the position that you're talking to you know like if i'm talking to a jehovah's witness right. i read their stuff if i'm talking That's to right. a mormon i read their stuff yeah so what would you say to the viewers uh who consider reading the new world translation the book of mormon the quran uh or other religious texts to be dangerous well well for a, a couple things you know uh so for one you know your point about uh accurately understanding and representing who it is you're disagreeing with is so important because even when it just comes to Christendom you know uh you know I imagine we'll talk more about this uh, at some point but even when it comes to professing believers who uh, who have uh orthodox beliefs they believe in a triune God and only saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and a virgin birth is none of that stuff but even then you know you know when we have these other disagreements you hear it so commonly just misrepresented and it's like what's the point of even talking like we're not even like there's no point in me even clarifying what I meant because my clarification doesn't matter all that matters is what you're ultimately uh, trying to argue so it's important that even if we are saying the truth that we are not doing that not just because you know logically that makes sense but it's also loving to get to understand somebody yes. we are to yes. love our neighbors we are to love our enemies and a way to love someone is to understand them now does that mean it's always going to be reciprocated no but that doesn't mean that we should then reciprocate <laughs> their lack of understanding and it just turns into an argument with a bunch of unreasonable people we don't want to be unreasonable we want to speak the truth with love uh, but you also said something else when you were uh um, when you were talking about the dangers of Jehovah's Witnesses and why stuff like this is important, in addition to everything that you stated about how wrong it is, how wrong their theology is, and how it is a cult, this, man, what, what you said is so important because this is why I show grace to people who are currently in the Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. because I understand that I don't even understand, I understand that I don't understand how hard it is to leave. Yep. You know, I, 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 I get it. And, and, and because I get it, I, I show grace and I pray for them. Yes. And, and I understand that they are trained to think that when I say some of the stuff that I'm going to tell you in a few minutes, mm -hmm. Melissa, that they're trained to think that I'm the devil, yep. that this, that Satan is using me to turn people away from the true God. They mm -hmm. honestly believe that. And I get that. And I get that. So, you know, I do the conversing, the Holy Spirit does the converting. So as evangelists, you know, it's just important that we just do our job, which is just do our part, share the gospel, however that looks, whether it's just sharing the gospel, doing some apologetic presentation, or however the situation may call for, we do the conversing, the Holy Spirit does the converting. Um, and the last thing I'll say as it relates to that is it's also important for us to evangelize in general because they do evangelizing, the proactive witnessing. When you see folks standing out on a college campus or a community college campus or, um, or they're sitting out next to the bus stop and you see the whole stand set up, everyone, even if they aren't religious, 
at all. They know that those are Jehovah's Witnesses. They are out there doing that. And not just them, Mormons do it. When you see them on their bikes and you see them with their ties on and their short sleeve button ups, you know that's them. When you yeah. see the Hebrew Israelites with their, you know, with their Power Ranger outfits on, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. You know, but when you but when you see them, you know, and they're doing evangelism trying to damn people to hell but they are out there evangelizing making sure people see what it is that they're teaching so you know we we want to come we want to combat that with truth mm -hmm. and trust that the holy spirit you know will do his thing with our work exactly and uh yeah that i I completely agree with all of that there's a a saying that seek first to understand then be understood and that seek first to understand, I think is uh, something we got, we could all work on. I think that we uh, can be very humbled when we understand what a Jehovah's Witness has to go through every month. For me, it was absolutely humbling and it, it made me love them. Did it make mm. me compromise? No, no, it, it helps me understand that what they have to deal with helps me understand the gospel better because it puts it in light the yes. the the whole mm -hmm. legalism you know the whole the 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 religious aspect of it they they work and work and work and work and work and they never know if it's enough so what you're saying is so beautiful and that is the gospel because what you're saying is you see image bearers Yes. You know, they may not be brother and sisters in mm -hmm. Christ. Uh, we would love for them to become that. We would love for them to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. But what you see, whether they do that or not, is fellow brothers and sisters in humanity, mm -hmm. people who God created in his image. The sun is too bright for us to look at, but the sun isn't made in the image of God. We are. And you're saying that you see image bearers and that is so important it is so important that when we are talking to an atheist an agnostic someone who is in heresy that we are combating their false ideologies their false theology their false teachings but understanding that that is still an image bearer mm -hmm. it is even if we don't like them it, yes the image bearers that we don't like are made in the image of God and God loves them mm -hmm. and God loves them. That is so important. And this also, what we're discussing right now, Melissa, is also important to, uh, you know, to how we live our lives in general. You know, uh, you know, if anyone is struggling with porn and you just love watching pornography, you know, you love prostitutes, you know, you love doing these things that people will never admit out loud. At the end of the day, that is an image bearer. That person, and I'm, I don't know the age group of your audience, so I apologize if I just, you know, threw that out there like that. But my point is, these are all image bearers. And I think that when, when our lifestyle reflects that we understand that that everyone is an image bearer if we're married our spouse is an image bearer if we have beef with somebody and we can't stand them that's still an image bearer and if that informs how we treat the person who we're offended by we will behave more christ-like more often especially when it comes to folks who are actually brothers and sisters in christ because mm -hmm. i see people who are brothers and sisters in christ treating each other like it's world war three you know, so yeah. Yeah, this could probably be a whole other video too. <laughs> okay, the New World Translation. Let's get into this. This is right. this is so cool. And this is one of my favorite things to do. And I, I hope that a lot of people understand that this is really smart to do because a Jehovah's Witness is not allowed to look at or research critical information against their religion because it's against Jehovah. And so if you can find this in their own publications, if you can see this, if they can see this in their own stuff, it's really hard for them to unsee. And it puts a really great stone in their shoe for them to think about. So, all right, let's get into the New World Translation. Uh, awesome. I would love for you to show us some of your favorite scripture, scriptures on how Jesus is God. He's not Jehovah God. And if they do say that he is God, 
so so that's so that's the thing too you mentioned john 1 1 earlier because john 1 1 in their translation said in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was a god so yes. then that begs the question how many gods is it yes, right so kind of so what do you so first yes. of all that's a problem even if we just go there like how many guys is it yeah. but but even in that case depending on how they answer because i've heard different responses to the question i just asked but what they will say is he is not jehovah god you know mm -hmm. he is not god almighty and yet we absolutely can demonstrate through their corrupted translation that jesus is god almighty because remember scripture already existed before the jehovah's witnesses existed mm -hmm. and it was before human beings existed. yeah before the translation existed so when human beings came and said we're going to have this practice and we're going to use the bible to say it and we're going to change the bible to support what it is that we're saying yep those human beings are not smarter than god so because the truth of God is that Jesus is Jehovah God, it still seeps through in their corrupted translation. So yes, I would love to be able to go to their website, um, oh, yeah. jw.org, pull up their study Bible and walk through some texts. Oh yeah, go. that was that was easy. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay, so where are you taking us? Where are we going? This is fun. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to go to what they call the Hebrew scriptures and go to Psalm number 102. All right, so here we go. And let's go to number 102. And we're going to read uh, the first two verses because this is the beginning of the psalm. And I would like for you to read if you don't mind verses one and two and tell me who you believe the psalmist is talking to okay oh jehovah hear my prayer let my cry for help reach you do not hide your face from me in my time of distress incline your ear to me uh do answer me quickly when i call Got and it. Got who's he and talking I, to yeah who is the psalmist talking to jehovah right he's talking to jehovah because he said his name if i say hey melissa can you go do this? Clearly, uh, Beta is yeah. talking to Melissa. The psalmist is saying, oh, Jehovah, hear my prayer. Sounds like something we should say to Jehovah. That's totally fine. Let my cry for help reach you. Got it. Sounds like something we say to Jehovah, right? Do not hide my face uh, in my time of distress. Absolutely. Can we please go to verses 25 through 27 so that we can see what the psalmist is still saying to Jehovah? So the psalmist is going to continue to say things to Jehovah God that it totally makes sense for a human being to say to Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. So let's see what the psalmist says to Jehovah God in verses 25 through 27. Okay, okay. Uh, long ago, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. Just like a garment, they will all wear out. Just like clothing, you will replace them and they will pass away. But you are the same and your years will never end. Uh, okay. So as I said about verses one and two, mm -hmm. clearly the psalmist is talking to Jehovah because he said he's talking to Jehovah. But the things that he's saying to Jehovah sounds like something we would say to Jehovah. Okay, long ago, you laid the foundations of the earth. Sounds like Jehovah God to me. And the heavens are the work of your hands. Sounds like Jehovah God to me. Mm -hmm. The things that you created will perish. But guess what? You, Jehovah God, will remain. And like a garment, they will all wear out. Just like clothing, you will replace them and they will pass away. But Amen. you are the same and your years will never end. Mm -hmm. Man, we're, this is from a corrupted translation. But gosh, golly, that sounds like the gospel. But let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. In their own Bible, we are still on their own website, and we're about to go to Hebrews, the first chapter, and we want to keep in mind what the psalmist in the New World Translation said to Jehovah God. So now that we're in Hebrews, the first chapter, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask that you go to verse eight. Okay. Let's see what verse eight says. Uh, about the sun. He says, God is your throne forever and ever. And the scepter of your kingdom is the scepter of upright, uprightness. Of, of uprightness, yes. My point here is because the Hebrew writer, who I believe the Jehovah's Witnesses will say is Paul, I go, hey, if you're talking to them, don't even argue that point. It's cool. You can attribute it to Paul, whatever. Okay. But we see here in, in Hebrews chapter one that the Hebrew writer is saying that God does not say X, Y, Z about the angels. And then in verse eight, he says about the sun, 
here is what Jehovah God says. So mm -hmm. Jehovah God does not say X, Y, Z about the angels. We see that in the first few verses. Mm -hmm. So then in verse eight, he says, but about the son, he says, quote. So the, there are several quotes from verses eight to 12 uh -huh. that the Hebrew writer is saying, this is what Jehovah God says to the son. Melissa, who is the son? Jesus. Okay. Jesus is the son. Great. So can we go to verses 10 and 12? Because these are going to be more quotes mm -hmm. where Jehovah God is talking about the son, aka Jesus Christ. Keep in mind what we read, the psalmist said to Jehovah God in Psalm number 102. But in these verses that Melissa is about to read, ladies and gentlemen, this is what Jehovah God is saying to the son, a.k.a. Jesus Christ. What does Jehovah God say to Jesus Christ? Starting at verse 10? Yeah, 10 through 12. And at the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are your works of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. And just like a garment, they will all wear out. And you will wrap them up just as a cloak, as a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never come to an end. Whoa. It sounds to me yeah. that Jehovah God thinks that Jesus is Jehovah God. Because when the <laughs> psalmist was talking to Jehovah God, he said all this stuff to Jehovah, Jehovah God, God. And now Jehovah God is saying it to Jesus. Now, this could sound confusing, but guess what? This is why we use words like Trinity, because that is a much easier way to describe one God that exists in three co-equal, co-eternal persons mm -hmm. who are all, who are all powerful, uh -huh. who are all knowing. So hallelujah, praise the Lord. According to the new world translation, Je God, the father thinks that Jesus is Jehovah God, according to their own translation. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. The, on, in verse eight too, it's worth to point out that God is your throne is not how that should read either. They changed that your throne, oh God, is how it nor it should read in the Greek. But they changed that so that because that's directly calling Jesus God, Hebrews right. 1 8. And so they changed it, uh, the words around God you is your what? throne. You know what? I'm gonna just flow with the Holy Spirit. This is not in my notes, but since you mentioned that, mm -hmm. you're you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right that they changed verse eight. Uh, to say about the son, it says, God is your throne forever and ever. And the scepter of your kingdom is the scepter of a rightness. But still, even mm -hmm. that said, mm -hmm. we can still demonstrate that this is saying that Jesus is God, though. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's read this again. I'm gonna read this one more time. So this is okay. Hebrews chapter one, uh, verse eight. And it says, but about the son, God, the father says, God is your throne forever and ever. And the scepter of your kingdom is the scepter of uprightness. Okay. That's what God, the father supposedly says to Jesus Christ in the new world translation. So can you please go to Psalm number 45? Psalm 45. Let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> the abbreviations are, yep. you got to yeah, watch them. Yeah, <laughs> and let's go to verses six and seven, because, because okay. in this, oh yeah. Yeah, so in this, the psalmist is talking about a song, right? Uh, the psalmist is talking about a king. And look at what he says in verses six and seven when he starts to talk about God. Mm -hmm. Okay. God is your throne forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. Bright, you loved righteousness and you hated wicked, wit, oh my word, wickedness. Yep. That is why God, your God has anointed you with the oil of exaltation more than your companions. Right. So mm -hmm. in a real Bible, this is even more powerful. Mm -hmm. But even here, we see in verse seven, he say, this is why God, your God has anointed you with the oil of exaltation more than your companions. The mm -hmm. psalmist is talking to, to God almighty and he's talking to him as if he is god almighty and he says your throne is forever and ever the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness so actually in hebrew chapter one verse eight it's it's a direct quote but of course it's it um it's a direct quote and you see how they still changed it to god is your throne forever and ever but it's from an old testament perspective the psalmist is talking to a deity figure Still, mm -hmm. even though they changed it, the psalmist is talking to someone of an almighty stature. Mm -hmm. 
And in Hebrews chapter one, verse eight, the Hebrew writer says that God the Father says the same thing about the Son. Why? Because the Son is Jehovah God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Man. So I feel like I'm like at a at a sermon. Hey, I can't Man, help awesome. it. I get happy. I can't help it. <laughs> Reach it, Pastor. <laughs> All right. What's next? All right. So let's do this. Let's go to that was kind of uh, cool that it wasn't even in your notes that you just hey, knew that. That was really uh, cool. Hey, may, may the Lord be praised. Amen. May the Lord be praised. <laughs> uh, let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 60. All right. Isaiah 60. Yes. Okay. Isaiah chapter 60, and I'm going to ask you to read verses 19 and 20 when the prophet Isaiah is talking. Again, we're going to read the prophet Isaiah talk about Jehovah God, and it's going to sound very Jehovah-y. Like, this mm -hmm. sounds like Jehovah. Like, this sounds like we something that we would all expect the creator, excuse me, sounds like something we would all expect the creator of the universe to have the capacity to do. Mm -hmm. But watch how it relates to Jesus, though. So let's read verses 19 and 20, and let's see what it says. All right. Uh, for you, the sun will no longer be a light by day, nor the, will the shining of the moon give you light. For Jehovah will come to you in eternal light, and your God will be your beauty. No more will your sun set, nor will your moon wane. For Jehovah will become for you an eternal light, and the days of your mourning will have ended. All right. So again, the... Beta, what's the big deal? This sounds like something we would say to say to God. I mean, for Jehovah will become to you an eternal light. Yes. I mean, I would love for Jehovah, the creator of the universe, to be an eternal light for me. That sounds like something Jehovah will, will do. God will be my beauty. Verse number 20 says, for Jehovah will become for you an eternal light. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to 2 Samuel. I just want us to remember that the New World Translation says that Jehovah God will be an eternal light. Jehovah God, okay? Jehovah mm -hmm. God will be an eternal light. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, Jehovah will become for you an eternal light. Which verse? In 2 Samuel chapter 22, uh, can you read verses 1 and 2 real quick so people know I'm not lying when I say <laughs> that he's talking to Jehovah God? I'm with you. Um, and David spoke to Jehovah the words of this song in the oh, day. Look, David spoke to who? Jehovah. Okay, so David is speaking to Jehovah. Mm -hmm. The words of this song. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're about to read is David speaking to Jehovah. I'm not making this up. This is in what the what the Jehovah's Witnesses believe is the accurate word of God. Mm -hmm. David says this to Jehovah. All right. Um, can you go to verse number 29, please? Uh, for you are the lamp, are my lamp, O Jehovah. It is Jehovah who lights up my darkness. All right. Jehovah, you are my lamp. You, Jehovah, are my lamp. No one else is my lamp, but you, because you are Jehovah. Mm -hmm. And Jehovah, you light up my darkness. I have darkness. And now my darkness is light thanks to you, Jehovah. And that also sounds a lot like what we read in Isaiah, the 60th chapter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that, you got any questions or comments for me? I'm, I'm with you. All right. Let's go to Revelation chapter 21. And let's see what John says. Keep in mind that the Revelation chapter 21, keep in mind that the Jews of the first century, they basically knew the Old Testament by heart. Mm -hmm. And many of these letters went to a Jewish audience who also knew the Old Testament by heart. So when we see them connecting things to the Old Testament in these letters is going to an audience who knows exactly the connections. So let's see what John, a Jew, said to other Jews in verses 23 and 24. 23, 24. Uh -huh. And the city has no need of the sun nor the moon to shine on it for the glory of God illuminated it and its lamp was the lamb. Hey, hold up, can and, you stop real quick? Hold yeah. up, hold up, one second. Yeah. That's it, and the city has no need for the sun. Mm -hmm. nor the moon of the sun shine on it for the glory of God illuminates the city and then it says and his lamp was the who the lamb wait a minute the lamb was the lamp you mean to tell me the lamb gave the city light you mean to tell me that it was I am, darkness Beta. I am I'm telling you that 
that's interesting because I just read that Jehovah did it and mm-hmm. Jehovah did it. Well, it must mean that Jesus is Jehovah. It must mean that that's, that's the only explanation, which yeah. again is why we use words like uh, triune or Trinity, because things that only Jehovah can do, Jesus does because Jesus is Jehovah. So mm-hmm. yes, Jehovah God lights the darkness, but guess what? Guess what? According to the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible, it says the city's lamp was the lamb. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Amen. The city was dark and it's no longer dark thanks to who? The lamb. The yeah. lamb. The lamb. The l- Oh, come on now. I lamb will preach God. to you. <laughs> <It's about a> <laughs> Honda. <laughs> 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 let's read uh verse 24 though verse 24 and the nations will walk by means of its light and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it and the nations will walk by means of the lamb's light of its light let's read this in context yep. and it says for the glory of god illuminated it and its lamp was the lamb and the nations will walk by means of its light Mm -hmm. The nations will now walk by the means of the light that is provided by the lamb and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. The lamb is the light of the city. Mm -hmm. Jehovah God is the light. Second Samuel and in Isaiah. And we see here that God, uh, that, that the lamb is the light that only Jehovah is. Now, I actually have something extra since we are right here. All right. right? All right. Can you go to, can you read uh, verse 22 for me? 22. I did not see a temple in it for Jehovah God, the almighty is its temple. Also the lamb is. All right. So you might read that. Remember, you asked me to demonstrate that Jesus is Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. Verse 22 says, I did not see a temple in it for Jehovah God, the almighty is its temple. Also the lamb is. So this is saying that Jehovah God is the temple for that city, Jehovah God himself, but also the lamb is. Mm -hmm. First of all, before I even go to another scripture, this is clearly saying that Jehovah God is something and Jesus is something too. So I think that alone is demonstrating that Jesus is Jehovah God because Jehovah God is something, but also Jesus is. But Mm -hmm. check this out, check this out. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37 and let's remember what we just read. It says, I did not see a temple in the city for Jehovah God, the almighty is the temple for the city, but also the lamb is also Jesus is. And when what you go to is? Ezekiel chapter 37, 37, I don't know why yeah. I thought 11, 37. Okay. All right. Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 26 through 28, where we're going to read the words of Jehovah God. What does Jehovah God say? And I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an eternal covenant with them. I will establish them and make them many and place my sanctuary among them forever. My tent will be with them and I will be their God and they will be my people. And the nations will have to know that I, Jehovah, am sanctifying Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forever. Wait a minute. Hold up. I want to make sure we understand what we're reading. So clearly we're reading Jehovah God speaking. These are the words of Jehovah God. And he is saying, my, he is saying, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. He says that I will establish and make them many. And then he says, my sanctuary will be among them forever. Mm -hmm. My sanctuary. I, Jehovah God, have a sanctuary. It ain't nobody with me. If it was somebody with me, I would say the little homie Jesus. Okay. That ain't, he doesn't say the little homie Jesus or my little nephew or he, that ain't what he says. He says, me, Jehovah, my sanctuary will be among them forever. Verse 27 says, my tent will be with them and I will be their God and they will be my people and the Mm -hmm. nations will have to know that i jehovah am sanctifying israel when my sanctuary is in their midst he is speaking in the singular because there is only one jehovah yet when we were just reading uh revelation chapter 21 verse 22 Mm -hmm. john said i did not see a temple in it for jehovah god the almighty is its temple also the lamb is so he is saying hey you know that singular um you know, when Jehovah was speaking in the singular 
about there only being a temple and that temple is Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jehovah God is that. But guess who else is? The lamb, because mm -hmm. the lamb is Jehovah. Mm -hmm. And John was clearly saying that the lamb is Jehovah God. Jesus is Jehovah God. Hey, Jews, in the first century, I, a Jew, am telling you that Jesus is God almighty, even in the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. Preach Does it. that make sense? Yes. Hallelujah. Preach it, Pastor. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter. You know what? No. Let's go to Colossians. In Colossians chapter one, all right? We are in Colossians chapter one. When we're using a real translation, this is one of the most beautiful scriptures that talks about the deity of Jesus Christ. But look at how their translation ultimately says it. So can you please read verses 15 through 17? Sure. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Because by means of him, all other things were created in the heavens and on the earth, the things visible and things invisible, whether they are thrones or lordships or governments or authorities, all other things have been created through him and for him. Through 17, you said, right? Yes. Okay. Also, he is before all other things. And by means of him, all other things were made to exist. Now, Melissa, I'm not, I don't want to quiz you, but do you happen to know what they changed here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm very really familiar with this. Uh, all other things, they added other. Right. I want to disprove their definition of firstborn using their translation, too, after oh, I make this point. Yes. So, so yes. Uh, yeah, let's make sure we, we, we do that. Excellent. But you're absolutely right. It says all other things. So here's the image of the invisible God, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's talking about the, all the things that are created. Mm -hmm. real translation says that all things were created in the heavens and on the earth the mm -hmm. things visible and invisible but this says all other things saying that jesus is one thing but everything else that was created outside of jesus uh whether visible or invisible you know uh jesus created okay whether thrones lordships governments or authority it says all other things have been created through jesus and for jesus right mm -hmm. also he is before all other things of course, a real translation will say all things, mm -hmm. but their translation says all other things by means of him. We see four times it says all other things. I'm going to ask you to go to their Greek interlinear here okay. on their website. Mm -hmm. In their Greek interlinear, they call themselves holding themselves more accountable. So you're going to see English words, and right beneath it, you're going to see what appears to be Greek. I'm not a Greek uh, reader, so I can't speak to how accurate that is, but I do know that, uh, or I presume that it's an attempt to say, hey, um, the English is going to sound a little broken because we're not going to change it. This is really the Greek translation when we look at their Greek interlinear. So some of the stuff doesn't yeah. sound like complete English sentences. It's just English words that are broken up. You're going to go to Colossians, the first chapter again. Keep in mind what I just said. Um, it's to the to my right. I don't know if it's to your right as well. <laughs> I just saw it too. I'm like, <laughs> click on so, it. So keep in mind what I just said. You see uh, what appears to be Greek beneath it and then English above it. Because again, this is an attempt to say, hey, we have a real translation. We're just translating the Greek. We ain't changing nothing. Those Christians, they do podcasts and YouTube shows talking about we changed the Bible. This here proves that we don't. Babe mm -hmm. is a liar. Well, let's go to verses 15 through 17 in their Greek interlinear, and let's see what it says. It's going to sound a little funny, so it might be hard for you to read because you're a great English speaker, but let's still read and let's see what we see here. Great. Okay. Uh, 15, who is image of the God, the invisible firstborn of all creation, uh, because in him, it was created the all things in quotations in brackets, invisible, whether thrones or lordships or governments or no, I, I skipped a line, all things in the heavens and upon the earth, the things visible and the things invisible, whether thrones or lordships or governments or authorities, the all things through him. And into him, it has been created. And he is before all things and the all things in him, it has stood together. Now I have a question before I point it out. I don't know, do you catch what I'm trying to show? 
other is not in there <laughs> other is, that- is not in there yeah it's, it's not in there mm-hmm. hmm. i always wondered I, why they did it in a linear man because i'm like why why would you do this like it's basically the cheat sheet of what you changed in your bible <laughs> <laughs> right it's the most damning thing in a linear i don't get it but i'm here for it right <laughs> like, right yeah. on their on their own bible yeah so so you tell me mr or mrs jehovah's witnesses jehovah's witness person why is all other in the other translation if it ain't right here they added it right they added it according to your own greek Mm -hmm. notes you changing stuff yep you know (laughs) yep they do this and it's throughout their entire bible that's the thing like adding jehovah in the new testament you're reading in the new world translation and they're like oh jehovah was taken out of the new testament it was never there right it was never there it was never never in the greek and exactly i believe it's because i think it's john 18 uh jesus was given the name of jehovah right it's beautiful jehovah's never once mentioned if there's a jehovah's witness out there watching you're not supposed to be watching but i'm glad you're here i'm here for it never once is jehovah added or even mentioned by any of the new testament writers in the new testament in the greek ever not even once it's been added by the organization i think that's this is a really good thing to do if you're going to try to spot this stuff is look at the interlinear. And, and and when you make the point about, yeah, well, you know, Jehovah is and in the New Testament and all this stuff. I know I made this point already, but I just want to stress it. Mm-hmm. When, when you say, well, Jehovah is and in the New Testament, they added it. They'll go, well, you know, um, our translators, they they knew the languages. They had reason to do it, et cetera, et cetera. So when we go to the Greek interlinear and we go to Colossians 15 through 17, Mm -hmm. and we see that this is saying all things or the all things, however it's written, it's not saying all other things. So when they hold themselves accountable, they don't pass the test Mm -hmm. because all things, anything that was created was created through and for Jesus Christ, the son of God. He isn't one thing that was created and everything else that was created was created through and for him. No, even their Greek interlinear says that. So hallelujah. This is how you can be reading a Bible next to a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon or a Hebrew Israelite or whatever, and how you can come up with different interpretations, right? Because this is what people throw in the face of the Christian a lot, right? Well, that's just your interpretation, Oh, this is nuanced. This is very different. How does that happen? When you can make somebody believe that you hear from God, right? So you just said a, a Jehovah's Witness will say, well, our, our translators felt it necessary. How do they think that way? Because they hear from God. They right. know more than me. They know more right. than you. They know more than yeah. all these little, these scholars out yeah. there. They don't know what they're saying. They just study yeah. the text for a living. Who cares what yeah. they think? But you have this mindset a mormon does the same thing with their prophets a jehovah's witness does the same thing with their organization uh with the governing body they hear from god they're the authority that is what happens so in the mind of the witness it doesn't matter what you think even if they see it and it's not like this doesn't work don't get me wrong it's like once they see it in their own uh scriptures because you have to understand it was god led to write it in there and you can show them in the past, it, it kind of, it can really be a good stone in their shoe. This is worth looking into with them. But uh, Veda, you made a really good point with that. And I want to stress and emphasize that that's how that happens. If you can make somebody believe that you have authority and God gave it to you, it doesn't matter sometimes what you see. And this is why it's so hard to get through to them or show them the um, inconsistencies in their beliefs and their scriptures. It would be great also, by the way, to get you on to talk about this, but uh, to dismantle the organization like the the governing body if right i always think of it have you ever seen independence day <laughs> i have <laughs> okay i love this example because you use the car i love using movies um there's a scene in the movie where uh there's a ship in the sky right and they're, they're throwing everything they can at it right everything they're throwing bombs they're throwing things and what happens do you remember what happened when they did that i'm trying to i'm trying to i'm trying to remember the movie i know man it's so long ago (laughs) uh independence day uh there was a shield around it a thick thick shield nothing they threw yeah so yeah give the ship as the mind of the jehovah's witness that's their brain right that's good shield is like the governing body it protects what goes into their brain and 
except there's a weakness, right? Like if you can, the guy, you know, remember he went in through the middle and he exploded the, the thing and um, you have to take down the yeah. shield and yeah. the shield is uh, like, that's the core, man. That's the, that's the house of cards. If you can get the, the witness to doubt the information they're getting from the organization, uh, that I believe is a really good way that is to, so good. oh yeah, to get through to them. Uh, I love this stuff. Okay. 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 That Keep is so going. good. Wait, wait, yeah, wait, 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 just, just to, on that point, that's, yeah. that's such a good point. And that is so true with all, with, with almost any cult, you know, mm-hmm. there's just this gigantic force yes. field that has been built uh, with deep roots that mm-hmm. feels impossible to break through. You know, even when it's not just something, you know, uh, I don't only deal with apologetics. You know, I come from a neighborhood, uh, you know, before I got saved, where it was a lot of pimps and prostitution and stuff like that. And pimps would do the same thing uh, with prostitutes that would escort for them. It's just this, you need me. What I am telling you is of the most essential truth in your life. And it is radically hard to get out of that if someone's in an abusive relationship people wonder why why is this person in an abusive relationship this doesn't make sense being in the religion of jehovah's witnesses is like being in a toxic abusive relationship that's what it reminds me of absolutely and from the outside looking in we can go yo just leave this ain't good for you but we're not the ones hypnotized Mm -hmm. exactly yes oh you get yes all of that and the way that yes and so the structure of mormonism there was a uh a really popular video a while ago about a, a Mormon. It was a Mormon who researched the Jehovah's Witness religion because it was safer, right? It wasn't as close to home. He was starting to have doubts. He's like, something isn't right. Um, but he, he has beloved religion, his beloved family within the religion. He's like, it's, it's sacred. But um, when he started researching the Jehovah's Witnesses, he's like, man, there's a lot of parallels. Right. Uh, the way that they do things wow. is exactly how we do things here, 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 tick, 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 tick. And he noticed these patterns wow. that were uncanny. And it was researching the Jehovah's Witness religion, realizing they were a cult. And then he's like, I'm in a cult. I'm in a cult. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's right. like, I'm not, I, I'm not allowed to do the same things they do. Uh, Jesus right. isn't God. We both hate the cross. We both have right. an, like an organizational system that we're not allowed to question. Like all these right. things, we have our own scriptures. The Bible is not really the word of God. They've just gone ahead and changed it. We just say that it's not, you know, that's been tampered with like all these things they all have yeah. in common. And the devil guys, he's just not that creative. Yeah, these things not. are all this, these patterns. They're not really? connected. These people made these re- like made these religions, uh, founded these religions separate from each other. Why are they the same? Like it's a, it's like a, almost like a demonic pattern. It's very interesting. But yeah, okay. So we're in the in linear. What else you got for us? Where else do you want to go? All right. Well, I promised to do the firstborn thing, so I, I want to oh, do yes. that real quick. So yes. so you 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 accurately said that firstborn. Uh, doesn't mean the first created Mm -hmm. and it actually uh, can very easily mean preeminent um, or it can mean the supreme uh, version of something it it means the standard right the supreme Mm -hmm. being so when Jesus is the firstborn of our creation he is the supreme being he is the standard and I would like to demonstrate using their own bible Mm -hmm. um, that firstborn doesn't have to mean that it is the first created of something can you go uh yeah back to online bible and then are you gonna go to psalm i'm gonna go to psalm number 89 let's go let's go to verses 19 and 20 okay at that time you spoke in a vision to your loyal ones and said i've granted strength to a mighty one i have exalted a chosen one from among people i have found david my servant and with holy oil i have anointed him all right so with david i have anointed so he's talking about david Mm -hmm. all right So David is going to be a mighty one. You know, he's going to be exalted and chosen. All of that's really dope stuff. Okay. Many people who are familiar with the Bible is going to say that sounds like David, but let's read Mm -hmm. verses 26 and 27. He will call out to me. You are my father, my God, and my rock of my salvation. And I will place him as firstborn, the highest of the Kings of the earth. What? So you mean to tell me that David, who is not the first King, 
is about to be placed as firstborn in the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible, and he's uh -huh. going to be the highest of the kings of the earth. Well, maybe because he's going to be the standard, maybe because he's going to be the most supreme one, maybe because he is going to be that dude. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what firstborn means, even in the New World Translation. So don't try to tell me that firstborn means that Jesus is the first created in Colossians chapter one. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. The sons of Jesse, David is the youngest not the oldest so he was the last created so if if mm. are, yeah if they're gonna say okay firstborn means first created then why is david called the firstborn in, of of jesse's right. sons in the psalms yeah. like oh man yeah. it's good that's good yeah. do you on. guys see like i hope my audience sees this like how you will know your bible by like researching this stuff it's so good and, and we're killing multiple birds uh you know with, with this stone here because we're going through the new world translation and dismantling their false doctrine but this is still teaching the trinity you know just yeah. looking through these texts in a real whatever translation you like king james esv etc mm -hmm. you're you're, you're going to learn the triunity of God in such in a, a, a deeper fashion. And I would love to show some things on the Holy Spirit as well. Yeah, let's go for it. I'm here for it. All right, great. So I'm going to ask if you can go to, let's see, let's do um, Isaiah chapter six. Let's do that. Let's see. This is, this is my personal favorite. It's a couple for the Holy Spirit, but this is my personal favorite. So let's say you know someone's listening and they're like all right beta you, you did that <laughs> stuff about jesus i think that's cool but what about the holy spirit the holy spirit is still a it the holy spirit is still a force the holy spirit is not a person you know so what is going on with the holy spirit well let's see in isaiah chapter six will you please sister melissa read verses eight through ten. Eight through ten then i heard the voice of jehovah saying whom shall i send and for, and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And he replied, go and say to this people, you will hear again and again, but you will not understand. You will see again and again, but you will not get any knowledge. Make the heart of this people unreceptive, make their ears unresponsive and paste their eyes together so that they may not see with their eyes and hear with their ears so that their head may not understand and they may not turn back to be healed. Now that's good. It's a couple of things I want to highlight. It's a couple of things I want to highlight. We're in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. we're in the Hebrew scriptures, and in the sixth chapter of Isaiah's book, he says, I heard the voice of Jehovah saying, and then we have quotes. So Isaiah says, I heard Jehovah talking to me, okay? And what did Jehovah say when he spoke to me? He said, whom shall I send? And then Isaiah responded to Jehovah and said, ah. I am here. Send me. Hey, mm -hmm. Jehovah, you're talking. And then I'm responding saying, hey, me, I can do it. And Jehovah God responded and said, go and say this to the people. You will hear again and again, but you will not respond. You will see again and again, but you will not get any knowledge. So Jehovah God is still talking. And then Jehovah God says, make the heart of this people unreceptive, make their ears unresponsive. Verse 10 closes by saying, so that their heart may not understand and they may not turn back and be healed. That's what Jehovah God said to Isaiah. Hallelujah. Can mm -hmm. we please go to Acts chapter 28? Acts 28. And we're going to go to verses 25 through 27, where Luke is. So Acts is similar to the Gospels in that it is a writer giving a historical account of things that have actually occurred. It's mm -hmm. not about Jesus's life and ministry and proving that Jesus is God, but it is an account of the apostles and the things that they did. It's not so much saying, hey, reader that's reading this, I'm teaching you theology. It's, hey, reader that's reading this, I'm telling you what happened. Mm -hmm. So in Acts chapter 28, verses 25 through 27, will you please read what Luke is writing? So because they disagreed with one another, they began to leave and Paul made this one comment. The Holy so, Spirit- Wait, I'm gonna I'm ask you to stop real quick because right. I wanna make sure we're all following each other. Mm -hmm. So Luke is writing and then he says, Paul made this one comment. So we're about to read a quote. This quote is from whom? Paul. Correct. This quote we're, we're about to read is from Paul. So what does Paul say? 
the Holy Spirit aptly spoke through Isaiah, the prophet to your forefathers saying, go to Wait, this. Hold up real, real quick. I'm going to ask you to stop yeah, yeah. real quick because Paul is speaking mm -hmm. and Paul is speaking to Jews. And Paul says, according to the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible, that the Holy Spirit aptly spoke through Isaiah, the prophet to your forefathers. So according to the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible, Paul who knew the Old Testament by heart and talking to other Jews who know the Old Testament by heart, he's telling them that the Holy Spirit spoke through Isaiah the prophet to your forefathers, saying, and then quote. So in verses 26 and 27, this is a quote from the Holy Spirit, according to Paul, according to Luke, according to the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So what does the Holy Spirit say? Uh, what does Paul say that the Holy Spirit said in verses 26 and 27? Go to this people and say, you will indeed hear, but by no means understand, and you will indeed look, but by no means see, for the heart of this people has grown unreceptive, and their ears have heard without response, and they have shut their eyes so that they may never see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn back, and I heal them. Mm. So did you catch that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In Isaiah chapter six, yeah, Isaiah said, Jehovah said this to me mm -hmm. and nearly verbatim paul says that the holy spirit said it because you can say the holy spirit you can say jehovah god because it's interchangeable because the holy spirit is jehovah god isaiah heard from the holy spirit and he said hey jehovah is speaking mm -hmm. and then paul said hey <laughs> you know who was talking to isaiah the Holy Spirit was. Uh -huh. And I'm saying it was the Holy Spirit. Isaiah said it was Jehovah God. Uh -huh. So clearly when Isaiah heard from the Holy Spirit, he thinks that the Holy Spirit is Jehovah God because he said, hey, y'all, I'm telling y'all that I'm talking to Jehovah God. And mm -hmm. Paul says he was talking to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is Jehovah God even in the new world translation. This is JW.org we're on, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be, come on. I get a lot of comments about how Jesus isn't God. And I think it's really interesting um, how people even come to that conclusion. Cause you realize right. that you're siding and agreeing more with a religion. That's uh, the Jehovah's witness religion. When it comes to certain beliefs, like uh, pagan holidays, um, Jesus isn't God. Like you're, you're actually being, having more in common with a cult <laughs> than you yeah, are exactly. with. Yeah. With like an Orthodox Christian position. I think that's really interesting um, and hopefully that puts a stone in some people's shoe because uh, this stuff matters. And, and you mentioned the darkness. And that reminds me of the scriptures that we looked at earlier, because mm -hmm. all of us were in darkness at some point. And if we get light, it's because of the lamb in the Old yeah. Testament, even in the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible that says that Jehovah is the light that yeah. cleans up the darkness. Oh, my goodness. God I am is the good. light of the world. Come on. Woo! yeah <laughs> dude you and, and, you and me if we ever went to church together it would be a, a blast <laughs> in the front row, preach it yeah <laughs> oh, man. Up. moving forward beta there are some objections that you get for this what do you think about this what do you got to say well so as it relates to the holy spirit we already responded to one objection actually with the whole firstborn thing so i'm glad you mentioned that but with the holy spirit you know uh you will hear different groups not just not just jehovah's witnesses but they'll say things like well we know that the holy spirit is not a person because the holy spirit fills people you know the holy spirit fills people like you see these language that says the holy spirit is filling people a person can't feel something you know uh, a w water is an object and it can fill a cup you know mm -hmm. um these headphones can feel a headphone case uh, you know, because it is a thing, it is an object, but beta Heshman can't feel something. I'm a person. So clearly the Holy Spirit is not a person. So we're, we're going to stay in the, in the new world translation right here on their website. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask if you can go to Acts chapter four. Yeah. I want to thank the JW.org for allowing us to so quickly and easily access. <laughs> right. Their materials. Right. Yeah. I don't know. They, they might change. They might see this and go, now you need a password, you know, to be able to get on their website. <laughs> you got to be a member. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get baptized in order to have access to their website. All right. Um, in Acts chapter four, mm -hmm. I just want to respond to this with a couple of passages. 
And let's go to verse number eight. Eight, okay. All right. So this is just demonstrating that, yes, you know, um, people get filled with the Holy Spirit. So can you go to Acts chapter four, verse eight? What does this say about Peter? Then Peter filled with Holy Spirit said to them, rulers of the people and elders. All right. And he says a lot of stuff, but that's not the point. This is just showing that Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. OK, so we use that language even still today. You know, I'm, I'm just filled with the spirit and we see it here in the book of Acts. But now I'm going to ask you to go to Ephesians chapter one. Melissa, Ephesians chapter one. There you go. Ephesians chapter one. And let's read verses 22 and 23. He also subjected all things under his feet and made talking him about head. Jesus, all yes. things under his feet. He's talking about Jesus um, and made him head over all things with regard to the congregation, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills up all things and all. Right. So they might argue, hopefully, if they watch this video, they're convinced that Jesus is Jehovah God, but they will argue that Jesus is not Jehovah God, but Jesus is a person. They don't argue that he isn't a person. But here we see language in their own Bible that Jesus is filling up one thing. No, he fills up all things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus is filling up all things. So Jesus feels according to the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. So that's one way to debunk that objection. But we can stay in the book of Ephesians and go to chapter three. Let's see what else we can find there. It's funny if they just freely read their Bible. Yeah, their own yeah. Bible. They'd be like, wait a minute, man. They're discouraged from independent reading of the scriptures. You're absolutely Got a right. Got to watch Tower Magazine, yeah. Or uh, yeah. reasoning from the scriptures. What verse was it? Uh, verse 19. 19. And to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness that God gives. Yeah. You're going to, so that you may be filled with all the fullness that God gives. So God fills. Okay. God feels. Jehovah God feels. So when the Holy Spirit feels, you cannot use that as a, you know, just a reason to go, well, clearly the Holy Spirit is not a person because that's not what that means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can say it could mean that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. So don't tell me that the Holy Spirit is not a person uh, just because the Holy Spirit feels people mm -hmm. um i could go to ephesians 4 to show jesus feeling more things um but matter of fact since you already started let's just go uh, for what uh what verse? Uh, seven seven through ten seven through ten here we go correct okay now undeserved kind oh this is undeserved kindness so that's supposed to read grace but they call it undeserved kindness very interesting okay. that they do that in their bible uh now undeserved kindness was given to each one of us according to how, how the christ measured out the free gift uh for it says when he ascended on high he carried away captives he gave gifts and men now what does the expression he ascended mean but that he also descended into the lower regions that is the earth the very one who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens so that he might give fullness to all things yeah so that he might give fullness to all things mm -hmm. jesus fills all things and gives fullness to all things mm -hmm. so again we could go on and on mm -hmm. i don't i don't i'm i'm confident that if i were to keep reading and keep looking through stuff i would find even more yeah. you know because we've already been talking for a long time and we didn't yeah. go through everything oh my goodness we could do this all day like there's so many things um but there is one more i want to show this one actually um i've used a few times in the past i actually saw a video of this from a former jehovah's witness years ago like 10 plus years ago i i wish i knew who it was i want to give them credit though because this is not my original idea and if i find that video it was so old i will add it in the description i will actually search for it he was talking about this how he had to struggle with the trinity like jesus being god and it was just one of the last things that he accepted and he said that if somebody showed him this at the door right if he knocked on the door and they were having a conversation about the trinity and he's like uh and somebody gave this to him, like told him this, he wouldn't have shown it to the person at the door, but he would have really wrestled with it. And that got my attention. And so I listened and I remember this trail through Revelation. So first, um, let's go to Revelation 1.8. So I already have this all pulled up. So go ahead and read that. 
Yeah. I am Alpha and the Omega, says Jehovah God, the one who is and who was and who is coming, the Almighty. Amen, right? Now, again, Amen. they add Jehovah in there. It's not actually in there. So I would ask the witness then, who is Veda? Who is the Alpha and the Omega? I would say that's God. That's Jehovah God. Yeah. That is Jehovah God. Yeah, Jehovah Next, God. We're gonna and, go. they're, and they're saying it as well because it says, yes. it says Jehovah. Jehovah God, undeniable. Yeah. That is the Alpha and the Omega. Mm -hmm. The second is uh, Revelation 21 verses six through seven. All right. So go ahead and read verses six through seven. Six through seven says, and he said to me, they have come to pass. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end to anyone thirsting. I will give from the spring of the water of life free. Anyone conquering will inherit these things and I will be his God and he will be my son. Yes. And so for people who are familiar with revelation, it, like in the verse first scripture we went over uh verse eight we all know that's jesus talking there just let them have it just keep going don't even worry about parsing that out because uh our bibles say that's clearly jesus talking but don't even go there yet i would say so after this verse who is the alpha and the omega who's the beginning and the end according to this verse it who's jehovah god, god. Jehovah God. Yeah, that's still Jehovah yeah, God. So th this is what Jehovah God speaking. Okay, let's go to a few more. Uh, Revelation 22, verses 12 through 13. Okay, so go ahead and read 12 and 13. Look, I am coming quickly, and the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Happy. Wait, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Nah, just 13. Okay. So according to the pattern that we've seen before, who's the beginning and the end? Who's the okay, alpha this, and the omega? This is still Jehovah God. It's still Jehovah God. Yeah, All right. And, he, and, and he's saying Jehovah God is stuff too. You know, we're mm -hmm. paying each one according to his work. Sound like some Jehovah. That sound like Jehovah Sounds God. Sounds like Jehovah to me. To me. Uh -huh. And this one I actually kind of found on my own. It wasn't in the original uh, video that I saw, but I thought it was just worth adding because it just drives it home a little bit more. And that's in Isaiah 48, 12. Because, I mean, obviously, these are patterns that we see throughout scripture. Uh -huh. What does verse 12 say? It says, listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, whom I have called. I am the same one. I am the first. I am also the last. And then you can see, you know, my own hand laid the foundation of the earth, the one that you were reading earlier. Mm -hmm. Jehovah has loved them. Talking about Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. First and the last, Jehovah God. Last one. Revelation 1, verses 17 through 18. All right, go ahead and read verses 17 through 18. When I saw him, I fell as dead. I felt as dead at his feet. And he laid his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Okay, so hold on. He said he's the first and the last. Uh -huh. Who have we established as the first and the last? Jehovah, Jehovah God is the first. Who's the and beginning last. and the end? God Almighty is. God the, Almighty. And the, Who is, is the, beginning the, and the Alpha end. and the Omega? Jehovah God, Jehovah God, God Almighty, the one true creator. Read verse 18. Verse 18 says, and the living one, and I became dead. But look, I am living forever, and I have the keys of death and of the grave. Yes. So at this point, you would ask the witness, when did Jehovah God die? Hmm. Right. I, I am the living one. I became dead. I became dead. That only makes sense if Jehovah God is became Jesus. flesh yes. and died as human mm -hmm. and then rose from the grave. Hallelujah. Look at the gospel. Because this is the gospel, right? Just explaining this verse, mm -hmm. you can't help but, <laughs> but preach the gospel because that is what John is reporting here. Yes. Absolutely. He says, and I became dead. So, so Jehovah God is speaking. The first and the last is speaking. The beginning and the end is speaking. And he says, I became dead, but look, I am living forever and ever. And I have the keys of death and of the grave. All in their Bible. All in their Bible. I can actually, you want me to elaborate on it? We, oh, we please can, do. Yes. Okay. Can you go back to, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you go back to Revelation uh, 22? The same verse uh, that, that you had uh, asked me to read. Matter of fact, but before well, you go there, before you yeah. go there, let, let's go to Matthew 16 real quick. Then I'll okay. show you uh, Revelation 22. So Matthew 16, 
verse 27. This is so much fun. Isn't it? This is a, I can, <laughs> I can do, man, I, can do this I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew 16, verse 27. 27, okay. So what does verse 27 say? Matthew 16, verse 27 oh, says what? That's good. For the son of man is come in the glory of his father with his angels, then he will repay each one according to his behavior. So you, I think you know where I'm going because you yeah, yeah. already read Revelation 20. But, but you, you see that? And we're going to get there. We're going to highlight this even more. Yes. The son of man is to come in glory of his father with his angels. And then who's going to repay each one according to his behavior? The son of man. The son of man is going to do mm -hmm. it. Okay, great. Can you also go to John real quick? John chapter five. John five. John chapter five and go to verse 22. For the father judges no one at all, but he has entrusted all the judging to the son. So the father is going to judge some people? No. No, the son is going to do all the judging. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's go back to Revelation chapter 22. As you're going to Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, I want to remind everyone that Matthew 16 says that the son of man will repay each one according to his behavior. Oh, that John 5, 22 yes. says that the father judges no yes. one at all, but he has entrusted all the judging to the son. He has entrusted all the judging to Jesus. So when we go to Revelation chapter 22 again, and we read verses 12 and 13. Yep. This says, let, let's read this again. Yeah, look, I am coming quickly and the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. I am the alpha and the yeah. omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Yeah, so this must be Jesus because we already read that the father will not be repaying each one according to his work. Jesus is going to be rep repaying each one according to his work. In fact, Revelation 22 and 12 is nearly a verbatim uh, translation from Matthew 16, 27, where he says that Jesus will repay each one according to his behavior. Revelation 22 verse 12 says that, um, that he's going to repay each one according to his work. But guess what? There's more. Can you go down to verse 20? This is great. Okay. The one who bears witness of these things says, yes, I am coming, coming quickly. Yes. And come Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. Further, So we already know it's Jesus for, because of what you said, Melissa, and because of what I uh, added an addendum to. But right here, it says the one who bears witness of these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. And then the response is, amen. Come yeah. God the Father? No. Come, Lord Jesus. Yeah, that is awesome. Yes, man, I could totally see you running with this, adding to it. Like you see the pattern. You can see how going through these scriptures, they just, scripture feeds into scripture. Scripture interprets other scriptures. Yeah. This is how it's done. Yeah. And I even love following their little references right here. I'm like, those references aren't bad, actually. Like, those are pretty good. <laughs> right. You guys should do a good Bible study just right. with the Bible and those references, and you will see all three of these patterns. Golly, man, we could do that. There's so mm -hmm. many. There's even like a few going through my head. Maybe we should do a part two at some point and just collab again on this because there's so many. And I, I really hope that you all get a lot out of this. This stuff is fun. Let me go ahead and stop sharing right here real quick. What else you got for us? Is there anything else that you want to share? Anything else that you want to tell my audience? This has been a blast. I love this. This is good. Yeah, yeah this this was good. Uh, you know, uh, this was a lot of fun mm -hmm. and I, I'd love to do it again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, on my channel, on Is Here Ruin Radio, you'll, oh. see, you'll see a lot of videos like this. Some are longer than others. Some are live streams. It might go an hour, two hours. Some are shorter videos, um, you know, five minutes long. Some are 15 minutes long. And some of them are just like this, you know, uh, demonstrating that Jesus is God or that the Holy Spirit is God or that God is triune using the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. Uh, I also have videos showing the Trinity in the Old Testament only, not touching the New Testament, just parking in the Old Testament and showing that God is triune in the 39 books of the Old Testament. Because remember, you know, before the New Testament was written, Paul and them was spreading the gospel. So mm -hmm. if the Trinity is true and they were using scripture, they would have been using the 39 books and what we call the Old Testament, you know? So, you know, it's not as uh, obvious 
uh, as it is in the New Testament, but it's certainly there. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's you like, wow. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, why didn't I notice this? So mm-hmm. I encourage you to check it out. I have multiple series uh, on there. I, I engage other cults like Hebrew Israelites. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes, you know, I walk up to them and I engage them. Then I'll do a review. They don't change the Bible. They just they just obliterate the meaning of every verse in the Bible. You know, so I, you know, I do reviews of what they're talking about using their verses to demonstrate that Jesus is God and whatnot. Uh, I'm interviewing scholars. Uh, you know, the most recent interviews I did was uh, Tom Schreiner, who's a complementarian. I interviewed him on women in ministry. Uh, I also interviewed uh, Dr. Sandy Richter and Dr. Craig Keener, who mm-hmm. hold to a more egalitarian view when it comes to women in ministry. You know, so I did a series on that. Uh, I facilitate debates. I just encourage you to check out the channel and I pray that it blesses you, you know, regardless of what your position is on various different topics. I would love uh, to be part of your, uh, of your studying life. I would be honored to do so. And I invite you to check out, is he a real one radio uh, and, and give me that opportunity. Great. Yeah. That's on YouTube, right? Yep, it's on YouTube, but I'm also on Spotify. I'm on iHeartRadio. If you type in, is he a real one radio, uh, it, it's going to come up. And it's like Great. the question, is he a real one? Because <laughs> I was wondering if Jesus was a real one. Come to find out he is. He's so real that you can see that he's God in the corrupted Bible. So yeah, <laughs> Jesus is very real. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah, I'll leave all of that in the description of this video. Yeah, guys, um, this is real unique. I, I think uh, Veda, uh, you're, this has been great. I think that you have a real great uh, way of approaching these topics. I'm really glad that we finally connected. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I know almost nothing about Hebrew Israelites. It would be great to get you on just to cover basics of what yeah. they believe, who are they, yeah. but I would love to learn more about that. And I've been asked about this a few times. Guys, thank you for hanging with us. This was so much fun. Thank you, Veda, for coming on. Thank you for spending all this time breaking all this down. And guys, remember, we could have done a lot more. Yeah, man, you know, we, we got to we got to debunk this heresy, Melissa. Yes. Yeah, man, I'm, I will link arms with you. I will. We will go <laughs> out and, and, and the war and like fight battles, man. Let's do this. Um, yeah. Poo, poo, poo. <laughs> <laughs> Great. This is a blast. Total blast. Thank you. Thank awesome. you again so much for coming on. Uh, it's my pleasure. God bless you.